Okay, we're live. So thank you for bearing with me, everybody. This is Donna Lewis with Breathe Life Ministries, and I got a little late start because I got my times all messed up. <laughs> I was thinking it was 4.30 start, and it's 2.30, and I'm the one who set the appointment. So, <laughs> but we're here. We're live with Christy Crenshaw, who is a health coach, and you have a it's really more of a ministry, isn't it? it you, and, and you consider what you're doing a calling. So while I make sure that we've got the ability to watch for comments, would you just take a moment and describe what Kingdom Health Building is about? And also how it came to be, because I find that to be one of the most inspiring and meaningful aspects of what you're doing in all honesty that so I'm just, I just want to let you describe it because it's powerful. Okay. So um, one of the, the things that I like to say is, you know, we're building health so that we can build his kingdom. Um, and this comes from, you know, my own health struggles um, and feeling like I was in a place to where I couldn't fulfill truly the calling that the Lord had on my life, because I was very overweight. I was more than a hundred pounds overweight. I was um, sick. My body was inflamed and um, different things going on. And during that time, you know, I started to cry out to the Lord and just ask for wisdom, you know, because I had been trying all of the diet programs. I had been doing what my doctor told me to do. You know, I was exercising more. I was trying to eat less, but you know, nothing that I did worked. Mm -hmm. You know, and we even did um, like the Daniel fast with church and um, ended up even sicker after that. Oh, you know, or just the more I tried to lose weight, the more sick I would become. Wow. And I just remember, you know, laying on my sofa one day and <laughs> crying out to the Lord because, you know, we had just read um, in church. It was um, Sunday after church and we had just read the scripture where it talks about go you into all the world. Oh, man. Nation and make... Um, <coughs> all nations and I was like you know Lord how am I supposed to do that when I can't even get off my sofa you know literally right. right now I can't even get off my sofa to go right to my house or to go play with my kids right you know, I'm just too sick to do that right now man and it was probably I took a nap that day and I got up and was scrolling through the internet and I, I uh -huh. don't remember how I stumbled across what I did but it was a um I think it was a Facebook post of a okay. of a family member who had lost you know quite a bit of weight and I didn't even know you know what he was doing so I reached out to him mm -hmm. and he then in turn um put me in touch with the doctor that actually right. helped you know oh wow with this so I mean it was an answer to direct prayer yeah but it was when I stopped trying to use my wisdom or I stopped using man's wisdom. Right. And I cried out to the Lord. It's like, Lord, I don't know what to do. Yeah. I need you to help me. I need you to guide me. I need you to direct me. Right. Time on, you know, the, the steps just started falling into place mm -hmm. for all of this um, to happen. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to make a long story short, you know, I, I joined this program and um, immediately just started to lose the weight. Wow was almost like it just melted off like butter following this plan. Wow. Um, and seeing how it changed my life. I mean, right. not only did I start to lose weight, but the inflammation that I had in my body went down. Um, the fibromyalgia, the chronic fatigue just seemed to magically disappear, you know, uh -huh. to eat what was right for my body. Right. Right. So not only did I do, I tell people not only did I lose weight, but I, increased you know the quality of my life right right you know and how, how long did it take for the inflammation and the the pain your body was experiencing to start to diminish about two weeks wow yeah that, that's quick yeah and how long did you how long had you suffered with that prior to that um let's see probably about 12 years wow yeah and, you know, I'd been to doctor after doctor, had taken all the prescription medications, you know, but I didn't stay on them very long because they just didn't work. 
right for me you know right. I'm, I'm kind of one of those people i'll try something but if it doesn't work i'm not going to keep you know taking yeah it. <laughs> yeah it's not going to work for me right so, you know i did give it the shot you know it didn't yeah work. And, sure but i had tried all kinds of supplements and, and different things like that as well you know i've kind of studied natural health mm -hmm. um, for about 20 years you know just doing mm -hmm. different things, like reading books following different doctors um uh -huh. a few online courses things like that but it's always been an interest of mine because I truly believe that the Lord has given us everything that we need in nature. Yeah. He gave yeah. us everything that we need. Yeah. It's amazing to me just how many, um, well, like I was, <laughs> I just, it was so the funniest thing. I'd never really bothered to analyze the nutritional value of broccoli before. Right. But <laughs> I had eaten broccoli, so I wanted to, and I was logging it, you know, I was logging it in my, in my fitness app and I'm going, well, I don't really know. And I kept getting all of this conflicting information in my app. So I just went and I Googled it and I was blown away. I mean, all of the nutritional, if you get really good broccoli, yeah. the, nu the nutrition that is in broccoli is mind boggling. Yes. I know everybody thinks uh -huh. you have to drink all this milk or eat all this dairy to get your calcium. Mm -mm. Calcium. Broccoli. <laughs> and well, and um, okra, yeah. another one. Uh, it's it, it's really pretty fascinating when you start seeing, you know, just what's in natural food. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And when we eat the food that the Lord gave us, mm -hmm. you know, not the processed packaged stuff that man wants to call food. Mm -hmm. you know, that's always something that I tell my clients is like, we have to redefine number one, what is good. Yes. Not just what tastes good. Good is what feeds and nourishes our body. Right. We have to define what is food. You know, food oh, is man. Not just anything that you can put in your mouth and chew and swallow. Right. Food, again, it's something that provides us with the, the necessary nutrients to sustain and support life. Right. That is the definition of food. And, right. you know, when we come at this and look at it from that standpoint, mm -hmm. and also, you know, from the standpoint of, you know, this body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's what I always tell people is that, you know, losing weight and getting healthy is it's not just about losing weight. It's not about pride. It's not about vanity. Mm -hmm. It's about this body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And I believe that taking care of that is another way to honor and worship the Lord. Oh, yeah. Every oh, time yeah. we choose to do something that's healthy is an act of worship to him. Mm -hmm. Choosing a healthy meal, exercising, you know, anything that we do to intentionally take care of this body, you know, mm -hmm. choosing to drink enough healthy water. Yes. You know, you know, what is that one scripture? Everything you do, do as unto the Lord. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. What's been the most surprising discovery you've made as you've entered this, this lifestyle and this calling? Um, I guess the most surprising thing is just the true hunger um, from, from other believers. Um, you know, because when I started trying to market this, um, mm -hmm. and again, just trying to do it from a worldly standpoint, you know, mm -hmm. let's lose weight, let's you know, do this um, mm -hmm. so that you can look healthy, so you can, you know, be healthy, so that you can look great in your clothes, you know, <laughs> that didn't resonate with people. Right. But when I truly got the heart of God on this issue, it resonates with people. Because there's a lot more, and I and I knew I probably wasn't the only one that was having that heart cry. Mm -hmm. to the Lord, you know, that I don't feel like I'm fulfilling right. what He told me to do. You know, because of the health issues, because of the lack of energy. You know, mm -hmm. because you know I'm I'm laying here on this sofa and my feet are swollen to three times their size. You know, right. And, you know, I'm not the only one that experienced mm -hmm. that. Right. And, and, you know, once he set me free and delivered me from that, then it's like, now you go and rescue others. 
Because mm. I truly felt like I was rescued from oh, a lot wow. of sickness and disease. I was rescued from early death. Wow. Dive a little deeper into that. I, I, um, because, you know, you and I've talked a little bit and in my experience, I know I felt trapped. I felt in bondage. Like I, I was in this, on this merry-go-round that I couldn't find my exit from. Yeah. How did, how did, how did the Lord lead you to that escape? Um, again, it was being open to, um, to his leading, to his guiding. Mm -hmm. And, um, and again, it was when I surrendered that day, when I prayed that prayer, it was a prayer of surrender. It's like, right. Lord, I'm tired of trying to do this on my own. I'm tired of following the wisdom of men. You know, I'm tired of thinking that I can figure all this out on my own when obviously I can't. Because the more I'm trying, the worse I'm getting. Right. So yes. It, yeah. was, it was an act of surrender. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's where we have to come to um, with anything that we're dealing with in our in our walk, you know, and, and mm -hmm. in our life. When we come to the end of ourself, you know, right. we realize I can't do this on my own. Right. You know, Lord, I need you. Right. I need your help with this. I need you to lead me. To that right person that's going to help me right yeah you know, sometimes you know the holy spirit may just speak something to you like don't eat this don't eat that replace this thing with this thing instead mm -hmm. but sometimes you may need someone to help you you may need right. a nurse. you may need a physician to come in and give you a plan yeah yeah so be yeah open to that leading and that guiding right. of you know Holy Spirit, either you tell me what I need to do or you lead me to the right person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, and when you get on Facebook the next time and you see something, <laughs> you yeah. know exactly what you've prayed for, click on it. Mm -hmm. Even if it's someone that you know, if it's someone that's, you know, testifying, you know, mm -hmm. they're sharing their testimonial, they're sharing their story, that mm -hmm. may be, you know, the Lord's answer to your prayer. Right. And, you know, because I don't know how many times I have prayed a prayer and then opened my email inbox. Mm -hmm. And there's something there, you know, that, that, yeah. in that prayer. So, you know, sometimes we always expect to either audibly hear an answer or mm -hmm. a, a vision, a, you know, an open vision, but God doesn't always work that way. <laughs> you know, so right. it's our natural world. You know, mm -hmm. he'll use other people and, um, and he knows how to get an email to you. Yeah. I do remember one time, I don't know how this email got into my inbox. Uh -huh. I had not um, clicked on anybody's, you know, thing. I had not gotten on their email list. Uh huh. Um, I, I have no idea how this one particular email got into my inbox, but it was exactly what I needed. Wow. So, you know, I didn't complain about it. I clicked on it. I'm like, thank you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that. I'll, I'll take that. Still to this day, I have no idea how I ended up on that person's email list, but I'm mm -hmm. glad that I did. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, you know, um, it. I, I think one of the things that when I, you know, the, the more I listen to it, the things that you have to say and we talked and stuff like that. Uh, one thing that really resonated with me as well, and I think that so many people can resonate with, is what you described about, you know, just trying this and trying that and trying this and trying that. And you maybe get a little bit of success. You might, you know, you might see some results. And then what is the, and again, I know that it's got to have, it's like there there is a moment where like you're talking about the surrender but i'm trying to pinpoint what the difference is between that moment when you're on the merry-go-round and that moment when you're finally off and you know you're off and go ahead typically what i find is when you are on that right path there's going to be peace with that path oh good the That's Lord good. will give you a peace and a determination that maybe you didn't have with the other things, you know, especially if you've surrendered 
like I said, you surrendered to him and you're like, whatever you tell me to do, I'm going to do it, you know, and you've acknowledged that, that your body belongs to him, you know, it, it's mm -hmm. not mine anymore. I know that I've been bought with a price, you know, giving him that honor and that place of I am surrendered to you and I'm going to do what you tell me. Right. And we come into that place of surrender and that place of obedience. Mm -hmm. Because it's also a place of obedience. Right. Especially right. if you know that the Lord has been talking to you about your health, about your mm -hmm. weight, about things that you've been doing. Um, and there is a whole series that I did of teaching called Obedience is Better Than Sacrifice. Mm -hmm. you know, there's times that, you know, even with our health, we just have to be obedient. We have to do what he tells us to do. Right. Um, you know, and even for me, um, the example that I give in one of those was, you know, the Lord was dealing with me about drinking coffee. Oh, okay. You know, and it wasn't so much the coffee itself, I think, that was that bad, but I was drinking too much coffee. Right. Uh, the job that I was working, I had to get up really early. You know, sometimes we had to be at work at 4 a.m. Oh, wow. So I was dealing with lack of sleep, you know, and different things. So I was using coffee in a way that was abusive to my body. And as a health coach, I knew better. I knew yeah. That. Yeah. But I was so tired. I was desperate for something, you know, and was drinking mm -hmm. way more coffee than what I should have been drinking. Right. And, um, came to a point to where I had to give it up completely because it mm -hmm. started messing with my heart rhythms. Oh, wow. And I was drinking that much coffee. Yeah. yeah. I've had to just completely give up, not just coffee, but all sources of caffeine. Mm. You know? So, you know, at that point in time, my obedience would have been much better than the sacrifice. I <laughs> made, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, cause yeah. I have soft drinks, which, you know, is good, but mm -hmm. now it's more of a sacrifice than what it would have been had I truly been obedient to him. Right. With coffee. Yeah. Right. You know, it's sometimes... better to try and walk in that spot before you get to the have to place. Yeah. <laughs> because there's freedom. A lot of people that truly get to a place with type two diabetes, kidney failure, yeah. and different things like that is yeah. that you just been obedient when the Lord had told you you wouldn't be in the place where you're at now. Right, right. I know that for myself, that's been the single biggest motivator uh, to really uh, get to a place of um, doing what's right for the body God trusted me with. Yes. Because, you know, I'm, I'm you know, I'm in, you know, I'm in, um, let's see, I'm 55 and I'm at that place where, you know, I look back at my family tree and I go, okay, well, this particular problem starts to manifest. This particular problem starts to manifest and those things I don't want, Yes. but I have to be in a place of cooperation Yes. with, with the way God created us. Yeah. <laughs> and that means eating right and um, being, you know, just being responsible. Yes. Yeah. You know, um, Cause, I mean, it's just like, you know, taking care of a car. Yeah. If you yeah. Take care of your car correctly. If you don't put the right type of fuel in it, if you don't, you know, yeah. put the right type of oil in it and the antifreeze and, and different things like that. Right. It's not going to run for very long. That's right. Because you're not putting the things into it that's needed. Right. You, with this body, I mean, you know, God has given that the incredible ability to heal and all yes. that continue and continue and continue until it is just damaged mm -hmm. to the point that, you know, it, it can't heal anymore. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just an amazing creation. Oh, yeah. And, but if we truly give our body everything that it needs, it will continue to heal. It will continue to regenerate the way that the Lord intended mm -hmm. for it to. And I believe, you know, that we always talk about living in divine health. Mm. And I truly feel like the Holy Spirit has told me that divine health is combining the natural with the supernatural. And when you pair Ooh. those two together, you get yeah. divine health. That's good. That is really good. Talk a little, dive deeper in that. That is awesome. 
you know, um, for me, you know, like I said, I had several medical conditions uh, that were going on. But when I made that choice to, um, to eat better, mm -hmm. make sure I was getting enough sleep to drink enough water and, you know, all of the things, you know, that I was led to do of, from the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, I then, number one, I repented mm. of not taking mm -hmm. care of my body. Mm -hmm. I felt like I was, was led to go through a period of repentance mm -hmm. because, you know, I had known some of the, of the things, you know, I knew I shouldn't have been drinking the, some of the soft drinks and different things like that, that I was mm -hmm. doing, but, um, you know, I did go through that period of, of just repenting, right. Not properly taking care of the, of the body that he gave me. And That's then I asked him to heal me. Like, mm -hmm. Lord, I'm right now I'm making the right choices. Right. I'm doing what you're telling me to do. I'm being obedient in what you're telling me to do. And I believe that there was a process of accelerated healing. Wow. Body. Wow. Um, you know, things wow. that I had dealt with for years, you know, that, that I no longer deal with. That's and, awesome. And even for me, even just over the last few months, you know, I had been found out that I had been taught some things about drinking water that mm -hmm. was not correct. Oh, wow. And I was not drinking enough water. Oh, wow. And when I started giving my body water, uh -huh. there were some health conditions that were still kind of lingering and I had been praying about that are gone. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. So, things like asthma and allergies that you wouldn't really? go away just by drinking enough water. Seriously. Because so, yeah, that's, that's something that I battle is asthma and allergies. Now, mm -hmm. I always thought that I drank enough water, but... What have you learned about drinking water that you, you can share? Yeah. Well, there's a very complex system that goes on inside the body. You know, everybody mm -hmm. always says when you're thirsty, drink, you know, when your mouth gets dry. Right. But that is the absolute last straw because it is so important to our survival for our mouth to stay moist that even if there's a drought situation going on in the rest of the body, uh -huh. They remain moist because we have to be able to chew our food and produce saliva and different things like that. Because if not, then we're, we're really going to be in trouble and, and we're going to expire even sooner. Uh -huh. So the body has developed a very complex, or I shouldn't say the body developed, but the Lord gave our body a very complex system of what they call drought management. And we oh, know okay. that drought is just simply a shortage of water. Right. And we'll start with some of the systems that are the least important. And then it goes up to some of the ones that are the most important. Oh, wow. And, um, one of the things that, um, that I found in doing some of the study and the research is that histamine uh -huh. is produced by the body as drought for drought management. Really? Now it can have some other effects in the body, such as triggering allergies. Uh huh. That wasn't the intended purpose of it being released. The intended purpose of the release was to help manage the water. Okay. And to conserve the water in the body and keep it in the organs and the different places that it really needed to be. Uh huh. Um, yeah, and some different things like that. And then um, even some of the stuff that happens in the lungs uh -huh. you know, when we don't have enough water. You know, when we breathe in and breathe out, we release, yeah. water. you know, um, we release, you know, water when we exhale. Uh huh. And so sometimes the body starts to shut some of that down because it doesn't want to lose water. There, there's always sure. already a precious shortage. Sure. So when you start to get that shortness of breath, you know, you kind of sit down, you relax, you're not as active. Mm -hmm. you know? But then still, if we don't give our body the water that it needs, then you trigger a more severe attack. And, um, oh. and I was just actually talking to my husband about this this morning because I'm reading a second book about all of this. Um, and I'm so intrigued by this because yeah. I spent three days in the hospital last year because of an asthma attack. Oh, my goodness. But it was precipitated by a cold. Okay. So good for several days. He ran a fever. Uh huh. Nothing serious, but, you know, he ran a fever. He mm -hmm. didn't stop sleeping. He didn't drink enough. So he's a type of person, he sweats a lot anyway. So mm -hmm. I mean, he had a fever, he was sweating more, he wasn't drinking. And then one day he just came to me, he's like, mom, I really don't feel good. You know, I can't hardly breathe, you know, and he had been treated off and on for right. some while. Um, you know, he's 15 
pain now. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, my medical background, I had, you know, a stethoscope. I had my the little pulse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when I put that on his finger, it read 89. I'm like, oh, Ooh, wow. no, that's not good. <laughs> yeah. 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 He had a very low blood oxygen level. And when I got mm -hmm. him to the emergency room, they said he's hardly moving any air at all. Oh, man. His heart rate was like 115. And they're mm. like, um, and that's what one of the first things they said, he's very dehydrated. Mm. So, you know, immediately they got him hooked up to some IVs. They started, you know, handing him these big things of water. They're like, buddy, we need you to drink. You know, yeah. Dehydrated. And they didn't come out and say that that's what caused the asthma attack, but they were more concerned about the heart rate. Right, right, right. right. But looking back on it now, I'm like, everything started to improve the minute they got him rehydrated. Yep. Yeah. 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 You know, oh, yeah. night was kind of rough. You know, they had to keep waking him up and they ended up putting him on oxygen while he was trying to sleep. Mm -hmm. But the next morning I could tell he was much better. He was right. rehydrated. He started to kind of, you know, not to sound awful, but like move right. stuff out of his lungs and he was able to open all of that up. And right. Breathe. Right. So, and that's part of, you know, what in the study and the research that I've been doing here lately says that, you know, when you don't have enough water mm -hmm. in your body, that those mucus secretions in your lungs thicken and you can't cough it out. Oh my gosh. And that exacerbates the problem. So not Absolutely. only are your airways shrinking, but you have this um, mucus and this phlegm, you know, in your, mm -hmm. not just in your, um, chest but you know in your bronchial tubes and everything right. that is further hindering everything and and honestly that's just one of the complications wow of enough water well I know that um my mother-in-law battles dehydration and it it affects her blood pressure yes uh her blood pressure drops really badly when yeah. um she's not hydrated and that's been one of the biggest um I guess battles that we've had is just, you know, as a family is, is to help her stay hydrated. Um, yes. And, um, you know, it, it, cause if you do for people who don't, I mean, I personally like water, so I don't mind drinking it, but a lot of people yeah. battle the fact that they just don't like water, even bottled water or, or mineral or, or, you know, good artisan water. They just don't like it. Do you have any advice for people that just don't like the way the water tastes to help them stay hydrated? Um, you know, I found that that when I started drinking what I call healthy water, uh -huh. that my body actually craves it. I mean, there is yeah. um, a type of water that is healthier than just regular water. Okay. And, um, and I discuss that at length, you know, uh -huh. in, in the Facebook group. There's videos and things in there that I've okay. done, you know, that will help people to, okay. to really understand, you know, what's going on with this different type of water, but mm -hmm. um, it's of a higher nature alkalinity. Okay. And it is, um, it's what they call ionized water. Oh, so it's kind of electrically charged and the molecules have been kind of broken apart. So they're smaller. Oh, uh, interesting. And what they did was, um, you know, there's been throughout the centuries, there's uh -huh. always been sources of water that people have, claimed had supernatural healing yes know, that's uh, true the fountain of youth or you know there's mm -hmm. places that people flock to especially over in europe that, mm -hmm. you, know, they, you know they can go and stay there for a week or a month and you know all of a sudden they're healed of everything mm -hmm. and so some researchers from japan went to these water sources to figure out what was different about that water mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. what they found was that number one it was a higher ph so okay. Water. And, um, but the way that it was alkalized was like running over these rocks. So it was a process of electrolysis and, and different, oh. things. Because a lot of it flowed <coughs> mountains, like, uh, you know, from the Swiss Alps and, and different things like that. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and then they, um, they actually created a machine. Okay. That, um, that would mimic that. Okay. That. So, okay. Oh my gosh. That's really interesting. 
Yes. That's really interesting. I know here in uh, Tennessee, not too far from where we live, there's a spring that runs and it, and I mean, it's, it's, it's in the most unexpected place. I mean, it's just kind of along the country, this country road, you wouldn't pay any attention to it. You'd just think it was a drainage ditch, yeah. but it's an actual stream and people go there to collect their water because the water actually tests cleaner and more pure than mm-hmm. the regular city water. Yes. And um, it, uh, you know, um, it's it's interesting. It really is, you know, that what what nature will do, what God created nature to do. Yes, you know, yeah. and a lot of um, even the bottled waters and things like that. You know, it says it's purified, or it says it might be spring, but yeah. by the time it sits in that plastic. Mm-hmm. The water is an amazing purifier. Mm-hmm. So it wants to purify things and it wants to remove toxins and, and chemicals. Oh, wow. That's part of the process of it sitting in that bottle is, and it's not just that the plastic itself is leaching these things. It's the water is purifying that plastic, but there's no other place for it to go except into the water. Into the water. And yeah. your body knows that. As you're sitting here drinking this water, your body's like, mm-mm don't like it you know yeah so you're like "Mm." the body's like no Mm -hmm. we don't like this stuff right and so then you end up trying to search out other things um you know so one of the things is you know get good quality healthy water Mm -hmm. Um, and one thing that happens when the ph is proper in the water Uh is you can drink a large amount of it at one time and it doesn't just sit in your stomach oh so have actually, you ever like guzzled a bunch of, you know, yeah, then your stomach hurts, water, and then it just sits in your stomach, and you get what yeah. you know, water belly. Yeah, it can happen that way if you're drinking water that's the proper pH, because it will open that pyloric valve at the bottom of the stomach, and it goes straight into your intestine. And oh, wow! Where it's supposed to because right. that's where it's absorbed by the body and and used in what it needs to be do- used in. So, so that 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 would go to the subject of metabolism, right? Yes. Your body metabolizing. So let's segue a little bit and talk about metabolism because in, you know, when we do that, I'm just thinking of a lot of different things about metabolism. Um, aging affects metabolism. Um, yo-yo dieting affects metabolism. There's so many things. So, Let's say you're talking to, oh, someone in, be, you know, middle age, like between 30s and, and 50s, you know, and they are wanting to get off of the merry-go-round. What would you talk to them about as far as metabolism? Well, as far as metabolism goes, um, you have to understand what goes on inside the body. Okay. Um, you know, for what is it, 30 years now, they've talked about, you know, calories in versus calories out. If you want to lose weight, all you have to do is create a calorie deficit, mm-hmm. lower the number of calories that you're eating while increasing the amount of calories that you're burning. Right. Those of us who have been doing this for the last 30 years know that if that works at all, it only works for a very short amount of time because then the body's metabolism adjusts. Right. Either continue to lower the amount of calories or continue to increase the amount of exercise. And that will eventually get, especially if you have a lot of weight to lose, mm-hmm. it will eventually get to a place to where you can't do that. And then mm-hmm. once you stop doing that, you have lowered your basal metabolic rate to such a point that when you go back to eating normally, then not only do you gain back the weight you lost, plus some. Mm. And you actually end up with a higher set point. Than oh wow! We started off with, so every time that we eat something, our body secretes hormones. Okay. And you know when you when you say the word hormone, everybody always you know thinks about the sex hormones, but there are many types of hormones in the body, mm-hmm. and every function of our body is driven by hormones. You know, mm-hmm. when you think of hormone, just think of it as a chemical messenger that goes and tells one sure. part of the body to do something. Sure. 
So there are certain hormones that control whether or not we burn fat. Uh -huh. And then there are hormones that control whether or not we store fat. Okay. And a lot of times that depends on what we eat. Okay. You know, not just in, it can be, you know, how much, you know, you do still have to be careful of portion control and things like that. But there are certain types of foods that will trigger certain hormones while other types of foods trigger other hormones. Okay. So that's what you have to understand about what's going on inside your body. And right. um, when you understand that, it's, it's almost like flipping a switch. Uh -huh. You know what you have to do. Right. You know, um, and again, I'll use myself as an example. Uh -huh. Sure. <laughs> um, I went to the doctor on Monday, you know, and uh -huh. I've been very busy, you know, of course, you know, I've, I've built my group and been really trying to, to um, build this ministry and, um, mm -hmm. And it's, it's a twofold thing. It's a ministry and it's a business. Sure. Um, so I've really been super focused on that. Mm -hmm. And I did notice that my clothes were getting a little tight, but mm -hmm. I had to step on the scale. And when I got on the scale at the doctor's office, it's like, oh no, <laughs> <laughs> I've got to get this under control, you know, cause I've yeah. been focused on other things right. and I can get on a little bit of weight. Right. So, um, I'm not as active as I was, um, because the Lord had me move out of my job mm -hmm. into this business. Right. So, you know, I was a dialysis technician, so I was always up on my feet moving. Yes. So again, I'm having to go back to the drawing board and kind of take a look. Recalibrate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Recalibrate some things, mm -hmm. but I know what to do. Yes. I know exactly what I need to do. Right. You know, the first thing always goes back for me to knowing your know your numbers oh yeah know your numbers and it's not just your weight or you know your bmi or even your height to waist ratio mm -hmm. know how much food you're eating yeah you know, yeah i tell everybody to log yeah whether you're doing it you know on your cell phone you know there are plenty of apps that you can use mm -hmm. or you can write it down in a notebook yeah and you know uh, lessons that I just did this week, you know, was about uh -huh. measuring, you know, there's scales, there are um, different ways that you can measure, you know, and know what a serving size is. Yeah. Food eating. That's one of the toughest things that mm -hmm. I've come up against is like, you know, I, although one thing that I've discovered and I, I haven't tried it yet in my fitness app is that you can, it, it's got this feature now where you can take a picture of what you're getting ready to eat. And it will tell you. So I don't know how accurate it'll, it'll Simple be. ingredients, I could see that. But if you have like a casserole or something like that, I, I don't know that I would trust that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because you really do have to know. And if you're using a food app, like say if you do make a casserole, you need to really put in all of the different ingredients. Um, um, yeah. You know, because... You can think that you're doing okay, you know, um, but when I went in this morning and logged my food from yesterday, I was like, uh -huh. it's like, no, <laughs> <laughs> as a health coach, you know, who knows better? I overdid it. You know, I had uh -huh. way too many calories, too much protein, too much fat, uh -huh. and, um, too many carbohydrates. I'm like, Lord Jesus, what? <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, I had let my focus get diverted. So, yeah, you know, and I'm the type of person that I really like to plan things in advance. Mm. So you can plan your meals and actually put them in your apps ahead of time. Mm -hmm. You can make tweaks and adjustments instead of just having the remorse afterwards. Yes. You know, <laughs> yes. Um, yes. No I do you know. You'll know, because if you put in, you know, I'm going to eat five ounces of say steak yeah and I'm gonna have a cup of broccoli or um maybe um a half a cup of rice or something like that you know you can put all of that in there mm -hmm. and you can see what the results are going to be ahead of time and say hmm, mm -hmm. now that's a little more yeah and you know to tweak it right ahead of time so right you know, again, anything that, you know, people are using to help them. And I really do recommend some type of technology mm -hmm. uh, because it has made it a lot easier. I tell you, um, 
I live by my Apple Watch. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. This has <laughs> been the single best, best investment yes. in my health. And, you know, it's funny, I went for a few months not being able to use it because I switched phones and it wouldn't talk to the phone that I was using for a while. Oh. And I, I immediately saw the difference. I mean, I wasn't as active. I became very, you know, because this will let me know, you know, yeah. hey, it's yeah, time to stand right. up. Stand right up. <laughs> yeah, you've been sitting on your butt too long. <laughs> stand up and move around, mm -hmm. um, you know, and it just... Well, and it, the other thing is that I don't, <laughs> it's kind of funny, but I look forward to getting the little pat on the back. You yeah. did your goal today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it also helps because it talks to my fitness app as well, where I'm mm -hmm. logging my calories and it, you know, it just, it, it lets me know where I'm at and yeah. When you're you, flying blind is not a good way to go about it because you really, I, I mean, I'm just talking from my own experience. When I just wing it, I think I'm doing good, but I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. And, uh, you know, and the, th the other thing that I realized, too, is knowing where I'm at is actually liberating. Did you discover that as well? Yeah. And it's not, you know, and again, it's not about beating yourself up about it. Mm -mm. Um, you know, I just did a whole series about using the armor of God mm. to food addictions and in unhealthy yeah. eating patterns. And in that, you know, I talked about the belt of truth. Yes. That's the first thing that the Lord mentions in the armor is that belt of truth. Because the truth has to be the foundation of everything. Right. You know, and so many people don't right. want to know, you know, because I know even before I started, um, I think when I hit 250 pounds, I wouldn't let anybody weigh me anymore because I didn't want to know what the number was. Right. Right. And I think I had already lost probably 20 pounds or so before I ever let anybody weigh me the first time or you know, <laughs> because I didn't want to know what that number was. Right. Right. We're afraid of that for some reason, but knowing where you're at and where you're going, you have to have both points. You have to be able to plot both points to be able yeah. to go where you want to go. It's a good you know, point. That is a, you, want to go you, make, you can't make your plan. <laughs> yeah. D d say that one more time, because I think that's an important uh, truth to em emphasize about the beginning where, you know, where you're started and where you're headed. Well, just think about if you're going on a road trip. Uh-huh. You know, you, if you're putting it in GPS, you have to calculate where you start from and where you're going to in order for it to tell you how many miles, how long is it going to take you to get there? How much gas are you going to have to buy? What's the total cost going to be? You know, and it's the same thing, you know, with your health and your weight loss, you have to know where you're beginning from. True. You know, because then that's going to help you plan out, you know, if you have 20 pounds to lose versus 50 pounds to lose, you know, it's going to take a little longer if you've got 50 pounds. You yeah. Know, pounds, you might be able to do that in six to eight weeks. Yeah. It's going to take a little longer, but you'll mm -hmm. still get there, but you have to be able to have a realistic goal and outlook for that. And when you're able to realistically sit down and take a look at things, you know, and, you know, don't let your emotions get involved with it. Don't beat yourself up. Don't let guilt come into it. No. At this point, you should have already surrendered these things to the Lord. You should have already come to a place of repentance. Right. And now you're in the stage where the Holy Spirit is going to turn this thing around for you. Yes. Because you're choosing to do what's right. You are choosing to be obedient. Right. So give those things unto the Lord. You know, and any feelings that come up with it, say, Lord, these feelings are not of you. These right. feelings are the enemy of my soul and I reject them in the name of Jesus. And yes. just, you know, if you have to picture or envision yourself putting all of this stuff at the foot of the cross, mm -hmm. do whatever it takes to get rid of those, because that is something that, that will hinder you. And, you know, and even in your process of, of the weight loss or going through, you know, there's going to be ups and downs, no matter, I don't care what you're doing. There's mm -hmm. going to be days that you're you're going to feel like you've done good. There are going to be days that you're going to feel like you haven't done well. Mm -hmm. But 
you know, if you do eat one cookie, uh huh, that's not a reason to eat the whole bag. No, that's not a reason. <laughs> and that's you know, and that's the mentality that a lot of people get is you know mm-hmm. I've messed up, you know, yeah. I've everything I've ruined, all the progress I've made because I messed up this one time, and then they think you know what's what's the point? What's I'm the just use? The whole bag now, and yeah, and you don't know how often I hear that from people. I'm like, no, 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 no. Yes, you did mess up, but you have not undone all of the months of progress that you have. No, give yourself no. some grace. Again, you know, if you feel that it's an issue that you need to repent for, then repent, you know, because maybe it was um, something where you were stressed and instead of taking it to the Lord, you ran to food. Yeah. It can be an issue of idolatry. Yeah. You know, sometimes we can be upset and um, maybe we are hungry, you know, where it's a true physical hunger, but we eat more than we need. Right. And it's, you know, it's a little bit of gluttony maybe because we're, we're not listening to our body's cues of when we're hungry and when we're full because of stress and, you know, different things like that. We're still eating emotions. Right. So we've just not learned how to tap into those signals and hear, you know, when you're truly physically hungry and when to stop before you're stuffed. Right. Right. What's a, you know, what might be a good tip for people like um because i mean if we all go through these day, the days like i can recall um one day i just i just was so busy i i didn't get i, I didn't get a chance to eat right yeah. it wasn't that i was ignoring i just was so busy i just literally never had a chance to eat um and then I, I was so hungry. I didn't even know what to eat. It was yeah. like, now I, I'm, and now in that particular case, I managed it fine. I just went home and I cooked my portions and, yeah. you know, but I can see where you, when you get to a certain place of hunger, sometimes you're just wolfing it down. Yeah. What's a good strategy for people when they get into that situation? So they don't um, sabotage the the way that i normally have people handle that is to have a healthy snack okay i'd say especially you know if you're on your way home or something like that and you just know i'm starving and i want to eat everything that's in the house right (laughs) (laughs) or like maybe a bag of nuts oh there you go um, some almond butter or you know just something that that's a healthy snack Uh uh-huh you're on your way home and Mm -hmm. that's going to kind of start the process of staving off some of that hunger and you find that when you do sit down to eat your meal you're not starving anymore so you know having a portion control option right uh, i tell people you know if you buy gigantic bags of stuff break it into into portions that's a good plan if if a portion is a cup get a measuring cup you know don't don't just grab a handful and throw it in there measure it Mm-hmm. And, um, put it in different baggies or different little containers that way they're easy for you to grab because we are pre-programmed to finish the entire package we are it's true so you sit down with a big package of something you know mm-hmm. even if you're just scooping it out like one at a time you know it's there's just something about the mind that we feel like we need to finish the whole package no matter how big it is yeah yeah and that's yeah. one way to kind of to get around that until we get our mind renewed, you know, to, to eat. So to pre-plan and keep little portions mm-hmm. like in your car, in your bag, yeah. something where it's almost like a little emergency pack, like just in case I have something with me that's going to alleviate that hunger. Yeah. And it's, and it's going to be, a choice that will not sabotage my my efforts and my and progress. You're not going to have to feel guilty about mm-hmm. you know, um, whether That's it's good. a healthy protein bar or, um, like I said, a bag of nuts is my favorite. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just measure out the right portion size of, of the nuts. I keep that in my purse, or you know, I try to keep them in my purse, not my car. But mm-hmm. every now yeah. and then, I throw one or two in the little compartment of my car, especially if it's cold outside. But Mm-hmm. No, that that's good. That's good. Because I think that is an area where just because of our lifestyle, 
you know, we can get into trouble without meaning to. Yeah. And, and, and I, I, like I say, I know for my own sake, you know, self, you know, when I get too hungry, wanted to, I, I, I just stop thinking properly. It's like, I can't even make a decision anymore, you yeah. know, and um, other you people, just whatever's closest. Exactly. They'll just <laughs> grab. <laughs> the easiest thing is not the healthiest thing. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And then that sends you into cascade failure because like you were describing the shame, the guilt, the frustration, all of that stuff comes into play. So if we can just stave it off. Yeah. Well, this is so good. This is so, so good. Um, I'd like, before we close, I'd like to touch one more time on the whole, um, kingdom aspect of our health yes go for it so you know again kind of the the tagline is building health so that we can build his kingdom right and you know part of what he has shown me is that this coming glory and the revival that's coming Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to have to be able to run with it. Yeah. And that we need our body in good physical condition yes. because the weight of his glory is heavy. Mm -hmm. And in one of the messages that he gave me, he told me that if we were not healthy enough for it, that he wasn't going to give it to those who weren't healthy enough for it because it would damage their health. Even right. though he is the good father. It's right. not going to show something upon someone that would cause them injury. And that right. there's people that are going to be left sitting on the sidelines because they didn't take their health seriously and get it under control. So I believe there is kind of that trumpet call going out now that says, get ready, not just spiritually, but get ready physically. Sure. Because this is going to take a lot of energy from us. Mm -hmm. um, because I don't know, you know, if you guys have ever been into in a service where the glory of God has really come in. I mean, it is physically heavy. And it's true. Um, when the presence of the Lord comes, you know, you feel your heart rate increase yeah. and just different things like that, because in the sin nature, in the natural world, you know, our body can't withstand that glory. You know, is that making sense? Yeah, it does. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's one reason why when, you know, we, you know, um, get caught up into the heavens, our bodies have to be changed yes. uh, because the immortal has to, the, the mortal has to put on the immortal, right? Flesh and blood can't, in, you know, experience the atmosphere of heaven. So we have to have a new body for that. Yeah. You okay. know. You know, this one is decaying. It's, it's right. Not, you know, yeah. Um, so that's you know part of of what I believe he has shown me mm -hmm. is that in this coming glory and this revival that is getting ready to happen any day now. Uh huh. Um, yeah, you have to be prepared physically. Right. And so, if you're overweight, get with him. Find out how to lose the weight. Mm -hmm. you know, start the exercise, you know, do anything you can to get yourself physically healthy and strong. Right. You know, uh, make sure you're getting enough sleep. Yes. Things like that, you know, we can't always burn the candle at both ends and then expect to be at our peak spiritually, you know. You know, you, you've, you've, you've raised that point a couple of times and I've, and I know people, I've read, and I've known people where, they don't they don't really understand how important mm -hmm. a regular night's sleep is for the body they they think they can live on a reverse time clock now some people can't avoid it because they work in a field where they have to work graveyards i mean that that's hard on the body, but there, but I understand, you know, we need our medical people, you know, yeah. you know, we need our police officers and our firefighters and, you know, it's a sacrifice they make willingly. Um, 
But just to stay up until 3 a.m. Mm-hmm. and then go to work at 8 a.m. Yeah. And then turn around and do it again. And, and again. And again. And again. And again. Yeah. And again. Um, it, oh, gosh. It, it is just not healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, touch just quickly on the importance of sleep because I, the, I, and what it means for the overall health of the body. Yeah. Well, I mean, what people don't realize is that the body repairs, rebuilds and heals at night while we're asleep. Wow. And there are certain times of the night that the body secretes different hormones. Again, those chemical messengers that are telling the body to do something. And if you are not in bed asleep at that time, you're not, your body's not going to send that signal for that hormone to be released. Wow. There are people that die young that they were eating right. They were getting exercise. They may have been drinking enough water. The only thing they were doing wrong is they were not sleeping like they should have been sleeping and they have dropped dead of a heart attack. Whoa. Their body did not get to repair, rebuild, regenerate, and heal at night. You know, wow. I can't even remember, you know, how many times the Bible talks about Jesus sleeping. True. It talks about Jesus. That's true. Went away and rested. He got, you know, even in the boat, you know, they were in the boat the next day. He was asleep. He made because sure he got his sleep of sleep. Yeah. Yeah. That's an, I'm so glad you touched on that. I, I really felt like it was super important for that at that point to be emphasized. Uh, Cause the, the two things that I've observed is that we don't as believers, we don't respect our need for sleep. Yes. And our need for health care. Yes. I, and when I talk about health care, I'm, I'm talking about what, exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Fitness mm-hmm. and nutrition. We, uh, and I, it, we will, we'll, we'll talk about our spirit Our you know, we'll, we'll talk about getting your daily devotions in. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about getting your prayer life in. Yeah. We'll talk about uh, living holy lives as far as, you know, cussing and, you know, partying and so forth and so on. But we won't touch on these important elements of proper sleep yes. and proper nutrition and taking time to at least get out and take a walk. Yes. Those um, are essential elements to living a healthy life, mm-hmm. you know, and I'll hear people talk all the time. You know, there's a somebody that's very close to me that's all the time saying, "Oh, no weapon formed against me shall prosper." You know, they mm-hmm. think they can just quote a few scriptures and say a prayer, but I, you know, I looked at that person one day last week and I told him, "You are the weapon," mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. nobody else is doing this stuff to you. You're doing it to yourself. Wow, you are the weapon, right? And they were kind of taken aback. They didn't know what to say. But I mean, that was very, that wasn't just something I said. That was very Holy Spirit led at that point. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's what that person I think needed to hear. Right. Because I've noticed some positive changes. Since that's good. Then. That's good. Um, yeah. Oh, I, I've so appreciated this, Christy. And I, and I hope you'll come back and join us because I really love I really love this perspective of what I think what I've appreciated the most in my conversations with you is the understanding that when we take care of this body, we are worshiping the Lord. Yes. And it is an act of worship. It is. And I think that's probably what I appreciate the most. So how can people get in touch with you? Um, You can reach me on Facebook. Um, Mm -hmm. I have a page, um, Kingdom Health Builders. Okay. I have a website that is um, Mm -hmm. www.kingdomhealthbuilders.com. But the easiest way to be able to um, 
join me and follow what I'm doing is to join the free Facebook group, okay. um, Kingdom Health Builders Community. Okay. Um, it's free for everyone to join. You know, I do um, a live teaching every Monday afternoon and okay. post throughout the week, you know, just Holy Spirit led um, things um, to share with people to help them improve their health. Awesome. Awesome. And I'm a part of that group. And I have to say that I've learned a lot of awesome, awesome things. So, so please check it out. Um, and I can put a link in the comments. Oh, that'll be great. Please so do. People can find it. Please do. Easier. <laughs> awesome. Well, um, I'm checking one more time to see if we've got comments. I'm not seeing any. So if you guys are watching this on the recast, uh, that is fine. Please like this video, share this video, and do leave your comments because both Christy and myself will be able to read those comments, respond to them even after this live cast. Uh, this is such an important topic, folks. Um, if you're struggling with your health, if you are struggling to get off the merry-go-round, please see Christy, hit her up uh, in her inbox. She is, she is very good at what she does and she is a real blessing. So thank you all. Thank you all. And we will see you next week. God bless. God bless you.